they say the war is over. But it feels like it was just yesterday. You want me to defend a camp that I torture? And who the bloody hell are you? I am a soldier. These people, they're my family. I'm your family. History hot quiz. Ten um, questions. Yeah, quick oh fire. Oh my dear. Um, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I mean, her name is Ready. Let's do it. Bring it on. Nineteen sixty-five. Nineteen forty-two. Nineteen forty-two. Nineteen forty-five. Forty-six. Ooh, I made it. Bicycles. A bicycle. I cycle all the way from Malaysia to Singapore. <laughs> True. False. 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 Hi. Skip. Because they have bananas printed on the notes. Exactly. Because they were made from banana leaves. Banana skins. Banana leaves. How to mix people with banana. So why are Pierre, Rebecca and all these other actors and actresses taking a history quiz with the varying results. <laughs> Seriously? Hey, what's that, sir? Well, it's part of their preparations for a new epic drama. <laughs> this Land is Mine is a journey back into Singapore's past. It's one thing to learn it in schools and another thing to reenact it. You would be able to see scenes that shock you. <laughs> okay, okay, we believe you. It is also a journey through much blood, sweat, and tears. It's a great story, sort of an epic yarn. Hey! Through the challenges of recreating Singapore's past in Singapore's present. This show gives Singaporeans a chance to understand a crucial part of our history. I don't think I've had this experience in any other series. To be a part of this is actually a huge honor. I think it's just incredible how, like, we made it happen during this time. This Land is Mine is an epic drama series about a period in, in Singapore's history that most people don't know about. How are we supposed to practice law when there is no law? They were caught with their pants down when the Japs attacked. Maybe they're still caught with their pants down after the Japanese surrender. Many shows are made about the Japanese occupation in 1945, but I think I can safely say that this is one of the few that uh, deals with the drama that happened after the Second World War. After the Japanese surrender, Singapore came under the rule of the British Military Administration, or BMA, an interim military government tasked with restoring the nation to a, well, new normal. Between repairing the infrastructure and re-establishing the rule of law, the BMA also had to deal with Japanese prisoners of war. I play Dennis Chung, a young Pranakan lawyer about to take on his first and most challenging trial of his career. You want me to defend a Kempe Thai torturer? I don't know if... if I can. Justice has to be done and seen to be done. Right now! 131 trials were conducted in Singapore against Japanese military personnel for the atrocities committed during the war. Some of the venues where these trials were held are still standing today. For some of the Japanese soldiers found guilty of their crimes, the sentence was death by firing squad. It was a time of complete chaos and lawlessness. Ah, whoa! Oh. Helen, she's a no-nonsense joy loan I can't mention, but there's more. Oh. You're MPAJA. Who is MPAJA? It's a Malayan, Malayan People's Anti-Japanese Army. Army. Yes. The MPAJA, or Malayan People's Anti-Japanese Army, was a guerrilla force that opposed the Japanese occupation. 
You know who I am? You are a Japanese. Listen to me, you stupid. What's happening? After the war, they refocused their efforts on punishing people they perceived to be collaborators of the Japanese regime. It was a dead dog. And several of her dead puppies. There was a note, and on it was written Running Dog. The Second World War period, it's of course a watershed for us. Um, sorry, and you are? I'm Walter Wood. I'm the author of this particular series of books The Advocate's Devil, The Devil to Pay, The Devil in the Deep Blue Sea, and finally this one, The Devil's Circle. Before there was even, you know, a page of script or a megabyte of data in this case, there was a book, and that book was called The Devil's Circle. Oh, intriguing! Who is the devil? A devil in legal parlance is someone who substitutes for a lawyer, which is what Dennis does. He's the advocate's devil. I kind of like that. Walter is not just a writer with a successful series of books under his belt. He's also a diplomat, a former nominated member of parliament, and our country's fifth attorney general. Meaning he's not just a lawyer, but the lawyer. The process of adapting Walter's 287-page novel into a 15-part television series was a journey in itself. Dennis was less of a man of action in the book. However, as the development of the series progressed, Dennis found himself in more and more situations where words were simply not enough. You just want to talk. But while there were some departures from the text, some moments remained intact. Dear Dennis, you asked me how the Japanese, my countrymen, think, and in answer, I've enclosed a few things to help you along. Mariam, what does she feel about all of this? I'm afraid what she feels is neither here nor there. This is a matter of public interest now, which means that private interests have to go by the board. She's lost her parents and has found a family with um, Ahmad and Karim. <laughs> when suddenly her aunt shows up. She's a British citizen. And she will be reunited with me. Mark my words. It was basically inspired by Maria Hathor. The whole problem, what happens when you uproot an English girl and she's alienated from her ancestral culture. How, how, do you, how do you resolve that? My Marge? Or am I Mariam? Going back to historical narratives like the Maria Hertog story tied into an important theme close to the hearts of Singaporeans. Who the bloody hell are you? The leitmotif that runs through all four books that I've written is this search for identity. Major Habibullah Khan. Reporting for duty. Cultural identity, racial identity. When it's tied to the themes of the fact that this land is mine, it's our country, it's our land, how do we make the right choices for ourselves and our lives? Better to die free of colonial rule than to live under it. There is a sense of, you know, uncertainty, distrust, you know, and also um, a sense of, um, uh, like, everything is temporary, like, we don't know what's going to change to you know. He is challenged. To whom does he owe his loyalty? Is it based on race? Is it based on culture? Is it based on who rules you? For Major Habibullah Khan, a former war hero, his struggle for an identity led to tragedy. With the scripts done, it was the end of one journey and the beginning of another. Many shows that took place in past era Singapore would at least be partially filmed in Malaysia. So I was very excited. I thought we were going to Malaysia to shoot. I was really looking forward to eating hawker food in Malaysia. But something called uh, COVID-19 put paid to that plan. And then when I found out that we were going to shoot in Singapore, I was like, what? I was quite curious how we were going to pull that off. Actually, Pierre, the production team was also wondering the same thing. 
the pandemic shut down borders. So, of course, we had to move all the production back to Singapore. I, I thought maybe we'll go somewhere in Mandai or something and set up camp. No lah. I was sad, but then at the same time, I was also very happy because uh, I'll be closer to my loved ones. Well, good for you, Pierre. But executive producers TJ and B. Lin were facing other challenges. Would we be able to find uh, the, the skills, the manpower, the resources, props, uh, wardrobe? Uh, would we be able to find all these in Singapore? It's a very challenging enterprise to create 1940s in the contemporary times. One vital aspect of production that kept producers up at night was finding the period props. When it came to period props, we had to basically buy, beg, borrow, uh, preferably not steal, and rely on the goodwill of Singaporeans who had kept these props. It's not just the props. The wardrobe also maketh the man, or in this case, the woman. We really made it a point to dress June differently. And she's very strong um, despite being defeated during the war. Throughout this whole series, if you actually watch very carefully, June has never worn a single dress. While June got away without wearing a single dress, if you know what I mean, Another character was never seen in anything but a dress. Honestly, I never thought that I would be wearing Chongsong. Well, did you ever think you'd be fighting in a Chongsong then, Sora? Don't try. Yeah, that's what I thought. Your daughter, how? Married already? The women of this land as mine, however, had bigger issues to worry about than their wardrobe. The interesting thing about um, this land is mine is the role of women in 1940s um, and, and is encapsulated in the character Ma as well as June. Don't I work just as hard as Dennis? Yes. Aren't I just as capable? Yes, but... Then why does he get to go to England and study law and then come back, come to the pride and joy of dear maiden and dear maiden? Because what? life is like that. My research has definitely made me appreciate that era a lot more because it really wasn't easy for anyone really living in post-war Singapore um, to get their life back on track and it really motivated me to play June as strong as possible because I really needed to do justice to this character. One aspect of June's character makes her just a little less conventional than your average 1940s Singaporean woman. June, let go! Before I hit you. June, she's not the docile nonia type. And speaking of docile nonia types, um, not. Let's see what our director and production designer are doing in the dark little corner of Singapore. This empty 200 square meter space ended up housing eight sets. The Dialmida and Dialmida office, the Joy World nightclub, and most impressive of all... Max House. The set that really left a deep impression, I would have to say, would be Mark's house. This is my house. Step in into the house, wow, it is like a complete home. One main location still continued to confound the production. Then for the kampong house... Uh... From what I know, we only left one kampong in Singapore. And when the production approached this one kampong, the answer was... Yeah, this is a porch there. How was this porch going to become a kampong house? If the production couldn't find a kampong house to shoot in, the only option was to build one. 
，所以我们在想哦，哎，为什么我们不用这一个地方来改装成一间旧式的马来高中屋子？Thank you. Some of the locations the production team went to had a connection to the era of the show, like a former Japanese elementary school that became the exterior of the Almeida and the Almeida, or an old commando barracks occupied by the Japanese during the war. But outdoors meant the production was at the mercy of so much of this production was filmed on sets. That when it came time to actually go on location, we had sort of forgotten about the challenges of location filming and the fact that we were trying to film a period piece outdoors in modern times. Well, look on the bright side. At least the skies are. And the storm. Okay, never mind. The rain came, and then it stopped. So we went out and rehearsed. Okay. And then when we were about to shoot, the rain came back. This was a pattern throughout the entire afternoon. We couldn't get a single second of footage in the can. Not only did it start to pour, it started to flood. That was probably one of the most difficult days I've experienced. Hey, welcome to the prison tour. This one is a. 500 per piece square feet. <laughs> this one is a 320 square feet. Yeah. Bigger, more expensive. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's about it. That is our tour. So, how do you like? Yeah, I, I like. <laughs> <laughs> But when it came time to roll the cameras, the team did their best to do justice to a dark period of Singapore's history. When Singapore fell to the Japanese in February 1942. It signaled the end of an era for the British here, but more than that, it was the beginning of a difficult period, not only for the government and the military, but also for the people of Singapore. I would say the challenging scenes, probably my flashback scenes. Although the show takes place in the period after the war, some stories, like June's, had their origins in the experiences of the Japanese occupation. It's just something that. No one would want to imagine going through. I didn't. I'm sorry. Can't everyone, just leave me alone. Get out. Okay, but before we leave you alone, there's one other thing we need to talk about, and that's how the normality of post-war Singapore was ironically paralleled in the new normal of present-day Singapore. Mask off. <laughs> Filming a drama during the pandemic, I think that would be something that I'll never forget. There's just a lot of new normal that we have to go through. It kind of disconnects you from the character almost. Cut. Good. Okay. Hey, put on mask. Put on mask. The minute you have your mask on, you're like, oh wait, no, it's like it's not the 1940s. It's like 2020. We're wearing our masks. As the human race, we adapt quite quickly to things, you know. Sometimes I step back and I look and I think, "Oh my goodness, I'm used to this." I heard that some people actually have to pay a fine. Shri, your mask. You just do it. War, and then post-war,、uh, they all have one thing in common.、Uh, With the people in today's generation who are facing this、uh, pandemic, is that we have this spirit of resilience and determination、uh, to survive. And what we are today is a result, to a great extent, of what had happened in those years. I think people should watch This Land Is Mine because you have everything in this show. You have drama, you have romance, you have action. Drama ini akan membawa kita balik pada sejarah, sejarah yang mereka tak pernah dengar lagi. When you watch something like this, lands, it makes you question, start questioning these things, and after the question, what happens? You want to seek answers, and with those answers, hopefully, it presents an opportunity.
for us to understand each other, you know, build you know, more stronger bridges. When Mediacorp, when we commission shows, we always look for stories that can engage and that can resonate with our audiences. That is why we hope uh, all Singaporeans will enjoy this production. Stop being a gundu. <laughs> Worry so much for what? If you keep looking back, You'll never see what's in front of you. This is our land and our future. A world without tears. A world without judgment. Where truth is the gift of our giving. A world without pain. This is our land, our home.